But before that, let's get into that PC report. Productivity Commission came down today with 71 recommendations aimed at getting Australia up and going. Better visa system was one, increased sharing of government data, all this stuff in relation to debt zero. We'll get to that as well. Let's bring in someone, though, who can understand this report because he's also worked for the Productivity Commission and as well as being a minister and, of course, now Senator for Queensland, Matt Canavan. Well, give us your professional take. What's your first impression of the report? Look, uh, a little underwhelming, uh, Peter, um, and not a lot of answers to the productivity challenge. I mean, it's absolutely correct and right that we... Uh, have not been increasing our productivity as much as we really should have over the last uh, couple of decades. That does manifest ultimately in lower living standards, lower real wages for Australians. That's diagnosed pretty well in the report. There's always good data out of these reports. So I just want to highlight one thing the report shows is that pretty much every sector uh, in the Australian economy has had a relatively or a mediocre sort of productivity result. They've been going OK. They've stayed about the same in, in regards to the world rankings, the one sector where there's been a big decline in our productivity is manufacturing. And what underwhelms me about the report is then there's not, it doesn't seem to be a lot of linkage with, well, what exactly has happened in manufacturing and how can we fix that? I mean, the pretty obvious glaring answer to this issue is, uh, uh, and you can see it in the graph, is that uh, our manufacturing productivity falls off a cliff at about the same time uh, our energy prices uh, went up a big mountain. Uh, and manufacturing really is just the conversion of energy, just use of energy, sorry, to convert raw, raw materials into uh, uh, manufactured goods. And so that, that, that impact of our higher energy prices is not really dealt with in this report. In fact, because the Productivity Commission seems to think it has to genuflect to these green gods, they want the carbon, they want a carbon tax to be imposed on the electricity sector. They want the government safeguard mechanism to be expanded to, uh, to electricity and to transport too. So they want you to pay more for power prices and petrol. So I hope the government does reject that recommendation. I certainly don't understand how a carbon tax would at all increase our productivity. Uh, one thing I'd say in their defence, though, they're constrained by the legislation at the moment. And, of course, the legislation locks in uh, 2030 emissions targets. Uh, both sides, no, you know, your mob and Labor, were, were kumbaya yeah, yeah. on net zero at the last election. I mean, that's... I mean, you are a brave outlier I, yeah. on some of these issues, but your party room's not. Well, so was, so was the Productivity Commission. So were the predecessors of the Productivity Commission. The predecessors were led by a guy called Alf Radigan, and he had no compunction arguing against tariffs and uh, the protection all round policies of the then uh, McEwen-led uh, government. Uh, he wasn't bound by legislation or government policy. He got stuck in and did, did his job of standing up for economic common sense. Unfortunately, I do think the Productivity Commission has become quite political. I mean, the government's out there saying, or some mm. unions associated with the government saying they want to roll up the Productivity Commission. So they're probably trying to defend their, 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 their little spot within the public service at the moment. It's very disappointing. We saw a former Productivity Commission chairman, Gary Banks, come out the other week and bemoan the state of economic policy yeah, discussion. Strong. And unfortunately, I don't think this report is going to move the dial much on that either. What about immigration? They spent a bit of time in the report on visas. We know our current net overseas migration has exceeded 300,000, our largest intake in history. Uh, you know, the Howard numbers were around 80 to 100,000. They rocketed under Kevin Rudd. We know that lazy governments, particularly federal lazy governments, uh, you just use it as a Ponzi scheme, you know, boost GDP. But in per capita, per head terms, Australians are going backwards. What was your assessment on that? Look, I haven't been able to read through all the thousand pages yet. They are doorstops, these reports. But uh, again, yeah, migration's not going to be a solution or really a, a, probably a cause of productivity one way or another. It adds more people and so you can get more economic output. As you say, that's kind of a lazy approach for Treasury officials to raise more tax uh, revenue. Uh, but it doesn't uh, actually make us produce more things with less, if you like. Uh, and so it's, to my mind, not central to the productivity issue. The, the productivity issue is going to be dependent, dependent, d depend on the efficiency of our capital, our labour markets, mm. our energy markets, the inputs into making things. Uh, migration itself is just adding more people, uh, not helping with our productivity overall. All right, let's go to gas. We saw AEMO, the, the energy regulator, say we've got real issues with gas. We've got a looming shortage. Talked about uh, potential blackouts or, or supply issues come uh, the middle of winter, particularly in places like Victoria. The Australian Energy, oh, sorry, 
The Australian Industry Group today warned that if there's a volatile weather, the East Coast will probably suffer blackouts. Um, I couldn't believe Victorian Premier yesterday, who's saying none of this uh, gas shortage uh, issue is my fault. It's all the fault of the hmm. exporters. Give us a reality check. Well, uh, Victoria is a massive net importer or will be a massive net importer of gas within the next few years. New South Wales is already in that stance. So if it wasn't for the Queensland export industry, gas industry, uh, the lights would be going out already. And in fact, we already are seeing reports of blackouts. I just had someone uh, while I was waiting to go on your show tell me that uh, uh, power went out in their suburb uh, today. Uh, I've heard similar reports in Brisbane uh, today as well. Uh, and so our electricity system is really held together by gaffer tape at the moment. With the Liddell coal-fired power station shutting next month, uh, things could get a lot worse a lot quicker. And, and when you think about what Dan Andrews has done, let's just look at what he has done in government. He has actually put uh, a, a ban on fracking, a ban on fracking of gas in the Victorian Constitution. So the Victorian Constitution now reads habeas corpus, equality before the law and no fracking. That is a fundamental principle uh, that uh, Dan Andrews will defend uh, like some French revolutionary. I mean, this is absurd. This is why they're not getting investment in gas. They've, they've actually removed the ban on conventional gas, but no one's going to invest in a state that has a fracking ban in its constitution. They're kidding themselves. And that's the reason we've got this big gas issue. Even if, even if we were to take gas from Queensland and send it down to Victoria, that won't solve the problem because uh, it costs a lot to transport gas long distances and those manufacturers in Victoria are there because they were close to the Bass Strait gas resources. If Victoria doesn't, lose it, doesn't use its gas resources, it will lose its manufacturing industry. Hey, great column from you about nuclear power in the Korea Mail. Just before we go, I presume you've seen what's happened in the UK. They've now declared... Uh, nuclear power to be mm. green and sustainable gives it the sort of same tax breaks as we see renewables get. Do you reckon we can do that here? Absolutely, and that's another disappointing thing about the Productivity Commission report. Not a single mention of the word nuclear. They do recommend a capacity investment scheme for uh, for energy supplies. Potentially that has some legs, but it would have been better again if they showed some courage and say, well, why wouldn't nuclear uh, be able to apply for that like in the UK? Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to look overseas for some inspiration about how we can deal with the issues we've got, Peter. And overnight, you might have seen the Dutch Farmers and Citizens Party won their upper house elections on a platform opposing net zero emissions, opposing uh, these constraints and removal of people's property rights. And it's about time we start uh, organising here in Australia on that basis as well. Uh, because I'm sick and tired of the Canberra bureaucrats thinking they know how to run the show. Uh, they, we saw during COVID how hopeless they were and how many bad decisions they made. Uh, and the sooner we take mm. back control from them, uh, the more likely we'll avoid the kind of blackouts and energy shortages that uh, are on our horizon right now. Here, here, Matt Canavan. Have a good weekend. Thank you for being on the show.